welcome to this video from in 28 minutes thanks for helping us provide awesome learning experiences to more than 300,000 learners across multiple platforms udemy safari and pact let's welcome our lead instructor ranga rao karanam welcome back in this video we will be introducing you to spring data rest this helps you in creating restful apis at f1 speed what we learn in this video, we learn how to create a project using Spring Boot, Spring Boot Starter JPA and Spring Boot Starter Data Rest. And we would also look at how to integrate it with the in-memory database H2. We look at how to expose RESTful APIs and we look at how to connect a Spring Boot project to the database using JPA Hibernate. We'll also create a simple JPA entity with a primary key and we would expose it extending the JPA repository interface. Now, before we get hands on, let's look at the big picture. Let's start with what is JPA. What does JPA allow us to do? It m helps us to map our Java classes to tables in the database. So you would create entity classes. So you take the Java beans and map them to the database. And you'd be using things like entity manager. So once the mappings are defined, entity manager can define and manage, I mean, entity manager can manage your entities. You can add a row, delete an entity and things like that. JPQL, Java Persistence Query Language, can be used to write queries against these entities. Now, what is Spring Data? The thing is, when you use JPA, there is a lot of duplicate code that you would write. How you act, how you use the entity manager remains the same in multiple repositories. There's a lot of duplication in code. And that's what Spring Data tries to solve. It provides a basic consistent programming model for data access. So instead of directly writing code using Entity Manager, you can just create a simple thing extending a CRUD repository. So you can define a simple repository and it can be used to insert, update, delete, or retrieve to the entities from the database without writing a lot of code. Now, once you have a repository, Spring Data REST can be used to expose RESTful services around the Spring Data repositories. So you can take the to-do repository and expose REST services on that without exp without writing a lot of code. So how do you start creating a project? It's very simple. Start with Spring Initializer. What you need to do is go and choose these dependencies, Web, JPA, H2, DevTools, and REST repositories. These are the five dependencies that you would need to choose and click Generate Project. Once you cl click Generate Project, a zip file would be downloaded, imported that, import that into Eclipse, and make sure that you do a file, import existing main event project and select the folder where that project is present. Once you import the project in, this is the list of starters that you would see. Starter data rest, starter JPA, starter web, dev tools, H2 is the in-memory database we choose and starter test, which is used to write unit testing. If you look at the dependencies, then you'd see a lot of stuff around what is present inside. So these are all the dependencies which would be added in because of the starter projects we chose. The thing is, we are going to use something called a in-memory database. And to be able to look at the data in the in-memory database, we need to add a simple configuration called spring h2 console.enabled is equal to true to application.properties. Now go ahead and relaunch your application. All that you need to do to run the application is do is to Take this Spring Boot to JPA with Spring Data REST application, right click it and run as Java application. That would start the application up. After that, you can launch up H2 console. The URL is localhost 8080 H2 console and make sure that the JDBC URL here matches exactly what is shown in here. It should be JDBC H2 mem test DB. Once you click connect, you should see something like this in there. So you should see a page come up where you'd be able to see the test DB and you'd see that there are a few users and there are no tables yet. What we'll do now is we can create a simple entity. What you can do is go ahead and create a class called student and put at entity on it. So make sure that you make it an entity which connects to a table and make sure that you are putting it in the same package or a sub package of the Spring Boot application class. Once you do this, the other thing which we are doing in here is at ID and at generated value. So these two things specify that ID specifies that this is a primary key, at generated value specifies that 
the value ID has to be automatically generated. So typically a sequence is created and used to create the ID value. Now, when you launch up the H2 console after restarting the application, you'd see that there is a new table H student created in H2 console. How is it getting created? It's because of Spring Boot auto configuration. What happens is because we are using an in-memory database, Spring Boot understands that I would want to create the tables directly. And it looks like the entities which are available and creates the tables based on their structure. So a table is created. This is what is called Spring Boot auto configuration. So a table is created. You can insert more data into the table by creating a file called data.sql and putting it in the source main resources. Here we are inserting a little bit of data into the student. So we are saying student 1001 name, comma, a passport ID. Obviously a dummy ones. And when you relaunch the application, you would see that this script gets executed. And when you go to H2 console and do select star from student, you'd see that data is being exposed. Now, what we want to do is we want to expose REST services around this entity. How do we do that? All that you need to do is to create a Spring Data REST repository. How do we do that? Is by creating an interface called Student Data Repo REST Repository, extending the paging and sorting repository. So you just create something like this. The important thing is student and long. We are saying, I want to expose the entity student and the primary key of student is long. And which path do you want to expose it at? We would want to expose it at a path called students. Make sure that this class or this interface is actually in the sub package of the Spring Boot application class. So what we are doing is we are putting it under Spring Data REST example student. When the application reloads, you'd see a number of URLs being exposed. You'd see a number of new URLs being exposed. And when you try to hit the URL localhost 8080 slash students, you would get this data back. You can see that you're getting the students details back and also you are getting a list of links back and you're also getting the details of pages. You'd see that you would be able to even post. So if you create a request body like this and send a post request to this URI, you'd be able to create a new student. When you create a new student, you'd see that it returns the URL of the created student back. If you go to this URL, you'd be able to see the details of Adam. You can also use put method to update the details of a student. So you can update the students of Adam by sending a put request to this URL. And you can also delete a student by sending a delete request to this specific URL. Spring Data REST not only provides the basic features, but also provides a lot of other features like paging and sorting, serialization, customizing it, using the Jackson's object mapper. You can do validation, you can add security on top of it, and you can also configure cross origin requests. I think Spring Data REST is awesome. Just be careful when you use it because you don't want to really use it for complex projects. When you're doing simple prototypes or you are creating simple projects, Spring Data REST might be the choice to quickly create something. In 28 Minutes is providing awesome learning experiences to 300,000 learners across platforms like Udemy, Safari Online and Pact. We have clogged million hours of learning in the last few months. Thanks for watching. Keep learning in 28 Minutes.